On September 6, 2018, the animal control officer caused an inspection to be conducted on the Greyhound Friends Kennel by Hopkinton Police Lieutenant Joseph Bennett. Hopkinton Police Chiefs Edward Lee, Hopkinton Fire Prevention Officer Thomas Poirier and Timothy Healy. At this past week's Board of Selectmen meeting, the board hosted a Greyhound Friends public hearing. The hearing was held to decide if the selectmen would recommend a new license to Greyhound Friends after their license was pulled following a cease and desist order from the state in January 2017. The Greyhound Friends attorney, Elizabeth Reinhardt, talked about the legal status of the organization. After a four-day trial at which 19 witnesses testified, on December 1, 2017, Ms. Coleman was declared not guilty. In announcing the not guilty verdict from the bench, Judge David Kunis said, and I quote, while there has been some evidence that Greyhound Friends could have improved the sanitary conditions at the shelter, there is also much credible evidence that the shelter was generally a safe and healthy environment for the dogs. Greyhound Friends has and does adamantly deny any dog was ever mistreated in its care. And I encourage you please to review the histories of 10 dogs in your materials as you further consider this issue. Lieutenant Joseph Bennett of the Hopkinton Police Department talked about the findings in the police investigation. All the items listed on the animal control officer's letter dated February 6, 2017 have been repaired and Gray on Friends Incorporated Kennel at 167 uh, Saddle Hill Hopkinton Road does not presently meet the standards as outlined in Chapter 62 of our town bylaws. The, the facility is not presently capable of providing a humane and sanitary environment for the kenneling of greyhounds based on their size. <clears throat> when the kennel is, has addressed the identified concerns, a reinspection will be conducted and the recommended kennel capacity of the existing kennel configuration is 10 dogs. The board then heard presentations from the current Greyhound Friends board and staff. And finally, I'm proud of the hard work that we have done in conjunction with the Attorney General's office. Reorganizing our leadership, addressing governance and board concerns, and rewriting our bylaws to reflect best practices for nonprofits in Massachusetts. 35 years ago, Greyhound Friends stepped up to advocate on behalf of this swift and intelligent breed. The organization's historic track record in educating the public and successfully rehoming thousands of these animals is beyond dispute. Greyhound Friends was provided, created to provide an essential bridge from that racing career to many more years as a pet. I would like to adjust to the change of management. How will it be different from before? The biggest change is that Greyhound Friends is no longer controlled by its founder. I will be a paid employee and accountable to the board. My job requires me and all other employees to adhere to all protocols, policies, and procedures governing our kennel. Next was presentations from opposition of Greyhound Friends. Anyway, numerous months went by, Mass Department of Agriculture, State Animal Inspector, and I finally went back to inspect almost eight or nine months later in um, the kennel facility on December 14, 2016. And the kennel facility was found to be in worse condition than most of the recommendations that were supposed to be addressed or corrected by the executive director and the board of directors and their staff were not done. Despite being under the eye of the Attorney General's <coughs> office, Greyhound Friends continued to write new policies and turn around and break them, made misstatements on IRS 990s, perjured themselves on Secretary of State forums, continued to do things that were conf conflict of interest, continued to pay our staff late. These are people who were like working so hard to care for these dogs, some of them working paycheck to paycheck and not getting paid. And then the board heard public comment from both sides. Fact, Greyhound Friends recently released a statement defending their lack of care for Emma, stating that she was impossible to handle. Fact, Greyhound Friends provided another false statement. Now that she is not part of the organization, she is the, she is the founder, but now that she's not part of the organization, I think these people are going to do a wonderful job. The Board of Selectmen agreed unanimously that they would not recommend a license be distributed to Greyhound Friends. 30 years we've been trying to fix the problems of Greyhound Friends, and 30 years it's failed. So I have to ask myself, why should an organization that's got it wrong for 30 years still have credibility? Yes, Louise Coleman was the driving force, but there were more people than Louise Coleman, and they saw it, and they, and they participated. There is complicity here. 
I know their hearts may have been in the right place, but at the end of the day, the animal's suffering continued. You can view much more about this story on our website, hcam.tv.